Hey, what is up guys? It is your boy Speed here, and today we're gonna be talking about the counters. Meta counters, in specific. I got five heroes here that are particularly strong in this current meta. We got Wraith King, a couple other heroes, Bounty Hunter, and so yeah, if you're excited to learn how to counter these top meta heroes, the heroes with the highest win rate or some of the highest win rates of the patch, smash the like button, subscribe, and don't forget to give Game Leap all of your money. Go sign up to the website down below. It's not a joke, it's a threat. I know where you live. Kind of. Alright, so, the first hero, undoubtedly, has to be Wraith King. I'm sure we've all struggled with Wraith King. This hero is frankly miserable to play against. It could be a mid-Wraith King. I just lost the one. That video might even go up on the channel. <laughs> Why is this hero broken? Well, it farms way too fast, its skeletons is now part of the lifesteal, and that solved a big problem for Wraith King. When they made the skeletons part of the lifesteal, all of a sudden this hero didn't have to feel bad about taking lifesteal to lane. Because in the past, you're like, ah, oh, you know, lifesteal for laning sage, that could be nice. But I can't take it, because I need a point in my stun, and I want to max my skeleton so I can jungle. Now you can do both, and you can crit reliably, which makes it really easy to last hit, and uh, easier to kill people and harass them too. So how do you deal with this hero? The first counter that I think is my favorite is Alchemist. Alchemist in particular is good against Wraith King for the pure fact that Wraith King can't burst Alch number one, and Alchemist, it's a very early timing compared to Wraith King. Wraith King likes to hit this, this Radiance timing where no one can really man up to him long enough, right? If you try to man up to Wraith King when he has his Radiance as most heroes, you'll simply get out sustained. But Alk doesn't care. He completely ignores that fact. Chemical Rage, a consistent stun, and armor reduction against a very low armor hero, right? Wraith King is just a low armor hero. He also doesn't typically build armor until later on, right? Until he maybe gets an Assault Kiros. It's just a hard counter. It works extremely well. Uh, you can put a lot of pressure, you can even gank him when you get your Radiance or whatever build you decide to go on Alk. Uh, you can even go the Battle Fury into like Shadow Blade, make some plays with that. Battle Fury with like AC is good against him as well. So all in all, you can pick up a lot of early items and stop him. Next up is Underlord. Underlord has to be talked about against Wraith King. The reason why this hero has to be talked about is because number one, the laning stage is very, very easy. You're going to get free farm as, as Underlord against Wraith King. It's as simple as that, right? So that's nice. You don't necessarily kill the Wraith King, however, you can deny an insanely large amount of creeps. If you're playing against Wraith King, I recommend you take two points in your E at level 3. It gives you 15% damage reduction against the Wraith King, and just obviously a ton of damage to deny his creeps. So, right then and there, you're going to give him a, a worse start, which doesn't guarantee the game. I'm sure you guys know Wraith King can just jungle, but it, it gives you a good start. Now, what's the next reason? Well, Wraith King buys a Radiance, right? So, buy a pipe. Nice. Pipe mech, there you go. Like, these type of heroes are frankly just, in my opinion, pretty good against Wraith King. And that segues into my next hero, which is, uh, oh, by the way, last thing, sorry for Underlord. Your Q is good against skeletons. Having a hero that's good against skeletons is insane. And frankly, it's actually something I forgot to mention on Alk. The fact that every time you kill one of these skeletons, even when it's not their second life, it gives you an extra, what, 27 gold? It's actually so good. It's so good. But uh, yeah, let's move on to Timber. Same thing with Timber. Really, he fulfills the same qualities as Alk and Underlord, lane shove, he can sustain, which is very important. You can see kind of the, the common trend here against Wraith King. Sustain heroes are good, and Timber is more of a kill hero. So if the Wraith King is dumb enough to stay in the lane, you just kill him over and over and over again, right? You dive him under his tower, he can't do anything about it. Once you hit level six, even when you hit level five, I recommend you pick up an Oove early into the game. Pick up that Oove and just run him down. There's nothing he can do about it. And yeah, in the mid game, you can pick up Greaves, pipe for your team, and actually make them sustainable against the Wraith King. And it's very nice. Also, your hero doesn't run out of damage, which is good too. And last but not least, I won't be doing four heroes for most heroes, but I think Wraith King deserves to just get hated on, and that is Invoker. So the reason why I think uh, Invoker is very important or good against Wraith King is for a couple reasons. Number one is Cold Snap. I think it's just good against Wraith King. The hero is very slow. Ice Wall is a counter to him. He can't get out of it. He doesn't usually buy items that do that. It's very uncommon to see Wraith King by, by BKB, especially early into the game. EMP, right? Birds is matter for Reincar. So basically, you're a big kite machine for Wraith King. That's great. Invoker counters a lot of carries for that reason. Typically, the non-Elu heroes, Invoker is particularly good against. And then the second thing is Alacrity. Yeah, so Alacrity allows heroes that don't have sustained damage or like carries that might lack a little bit of damage against the Wraith King to be able to kill him no problem. All of a sudden, that, that issue just completely goes away. Drop a Cold Snap, drop a, an Alacrity, and your carry can go to town. Next up, let's get into Ricky. So Ricky is, yeah, a hero that's doing very well right now. The hero's doing incredibly well right now. I, I think the reason for that was a couple of the various buffs they gave to him. Also, I, I feel like with like Sven going out the meta, 
heroes like Ricky are a little bit better. You know what I mean? Like, it's not that farming is bad this patch. The map didn't change. Not much really changed in that regard, which I feel like they'll do soon, hopefully. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Maybe that won't actually happen. But all in all, what we can say is that Ricky is doing well. His win rate's about 53% right now, and he's I would say he's a meta hero that just stomps pop. So let's get into it. First hero is Underlord. I'm not going to say a lot because it's the same reasons he counters Wraith King. Well, kind of. There's a couple more. So obviously the ore is, is good against uh, Ricky. You know, being able to buy Greaves and... You know, even a force tap for your team is quite good, but I'm a huge fan of Atos against Ricky. Reason being is the Underlord Pit of Malice is one of the best spells in the game against Ricky. Ricky's main way of disengaging is what? He uses Tricks at a Trade and then Blink Strikes out. But if he Tricks at a Trade, you just put down a Pit of Malice and there's no way for him to avoid it at all. And that's great. And you know, Ricky, one of his biggest weaknesses is actually Roots, right? The hero hates Roots. He does buy a Manta, right? That's, that's a thing. But he hates Roots, because it forces an early Manta, and before Manta, which, you know, a hero that can't really farm, it takes a while for Ricky to get to that Manta, and so the Pit of Malice into Rod is a great way of killing him, considering you also do a lot of magical damage, which is Ricky's second biggest weakness. Next up, countered Ricky is Bounty Hunter, and uh, yeah, I, I'm not gonna, I'm really not gonna even spend too much time on this, I just think it's good to have, like, the occasional refresher on, like, oh yeah, I can pick this hero against Ricky, but yeah, track... You kind of track them. I recommend you don't max out your Shadow Walk. It's good to have, you know, a lot of points in Shuriken just for that little bit of magical damage against Ricky in the early game. It's nice. So yeah, max out the Shuriken. Not first, right? You can still do it second after your, your Janata. But just keep that in mind. I think it's a good option. And then lastly, for Ricky counters, we have Naga. This is a hero that honestly is at the top of the win rate right now. The hero, honestly, I even consider putting it in this video alone. It seems to be doing very, very well. I'll have to double check what the changes were, but... This hero is doing well, and it's very good against Ricky for a couple reasons. Number one, you're a hero that naturally buys Manta. Any hero that buys Manta is good against Ricky because in the early game, well, mid game, when he hits his defusal timing, he likes to pick on carries and side lanes, but Naga completely ignores him. Naga's a high armor hero, she has illusions to tank tricks at a trade, and a Manta to dispel, you know, defusal slow. Also, what did we talk about with Roots? She has a root, one of the longest roots in the game. It's a menace to Ricky. It's really, really tough for him to deal with. Also, even your ulti is good setup for Ricky. For instance, the Jakiro combo against Ricky is good. Disruptor combo is absolutely insane against Ricky. If you don't know what I mean, you Song of the Siren, you set up an Ice Path or a Disruptor Ultimate, Static Storm into Kinetic Field or vice versa, and it's incredibly good against Ricky. So I think those combos in particular are very good counters to these heroes. Next up, we got Puck, the Buck. And uh, yeah, so counters to him are Nyx Assassin. This is probably my favorite. This hero is brutal for Puck. It is brutal. Like, Spike Carapace is just Puck's... It, it, Puck has nightmares. When Puck goes to bed, he doesn't dream. He has nightmares about Nyx's, you know, Spike Carapace. He just does. But yeah, all in all, not only is Spike Carapace just horrible for Puck, Puck is a high-end hero, so Mana Burn just destroys him. And uh, on top of that, you know, even just the ability to scout out a Puck with Vendetta and then do, like, what, 400 damage to him is so good against a squishy hero like Puck. And... You know, in the early game, if Puck gets gone on, his obviously his reaction is to disengage with his spells, but you go on him, then you pop Carapace, and all of a sudden Puck's like, ah, I can't really do that. So, <laughs> yeah. Then we have Alchemist. I, yes, I know I'm saying Alk again, but I'm a huge fan of Alk this patch. I think this hero is very, very good. I always do. I always think Alk is good for pubs. You saw my Alk video, guys. Pick it and play it like that, and you're, you know, free cash. It's free cash. But on top of that, Alk is good against Puck. Not necessarily because I would say Alk directly counters Puck. I'd say it's just more so the playstyle that works, in my opinion. Which is, you know, Alk doesn't really die to Puck in lane unless the Puck player is very, very competent. Like, let's say the Puck is Henry Dota, you know what I mean? Like, you know, Henry Dota, you know, he's going to make the Alk play every single time. But other than that, you know, other than that, <laughs> the Alk is going to get farmed. He's going to hit his levels. He's going to get super, super farmed. He's just going to outscale the Puck. And a lot of Puck players, what they do is that they don't really shove waves enough, which is what you should be doing in this hero all the time. Instead, they gank a ton in side lanes, and then the Alk gets free farm, you know. You know how that goes. You know how that goes. On top of that, Alk can buy pretty good items against Puck. Abyssal is a really good item against Puck. I mean, for obvious reasons, and, you know, the fact that Alk buys it early a lot of games is super nice, so I honestly believe that's a big deal. <laughs> I get one of the biggest deals. Next up, we have Ricky. Yes, the hero we just talked about countering is a counter to Puck. To be honest, this one can go both ways. Dream Coil is incredibly good against Ricky as it disables tricks at a trade. It also disables uh, Bling Strike. However, in pubs, who usually gets to jump? It's going to be Ricky. Why? Because people don't put down enough sentries. They don't put down enough vision. 
And so Ricky gets the jump, right? And uh, when Ricky gets the jump against Puck, it's like hockey. He, uh, right, I'm not going to try to run with that joke, but you get the point, right? Next up is Sand King. Sand King is doing well. Can you believe it? This hero actually feels good. Now that Epicenter is a usable spell, I feel like Sand King's just a menace. I mean, the pure fact that you can't cancel it anymore is such a big... Like, it really, really is. In the past, the fact that you couldn't fake Epicenter to scare people or, you know, you had to make sure there wasn't a single spell that could cancel it. It was insane. Like, it was so backwards. Sand King was so backwards. You're some frontliner, right? You want to be a frontliner, and yet you have a channeled spell. It's, it's like having Fiend's Grip and having the frontline. Like, how is that going to work? It's not... How is it? I wonder what would happen if Sand King just got Fiend's Grip as his new ultimate. You know what I mean? Like, would he ever get it off? Combos, Sandstorm with a Fiend's Grip, you know? Invis with Fiend's Grip. Woo! But uh, here's a couple counters. So the first one is Annie Mage. He's a very standard counter to Sand King, but I think it's good. Maybe people don't know about this. The reason being is you can reflect this stun in the laning stage. You also get magic resist in the laning stage. You have disengage, right? If he if he ever tries to go on you in Epi, you can easily get out of it. And Matterbird is incredibly good against Sand King. Sand King's biggest weakness is definitely like his level one. It's so bad. You can take Caustic on Sand King and it can be pretty good against Am, but if Am trades, like, what you want to do here is, let's say you're playing against the Sand King. You want to really make sure that your support runs at this guy at level one. Like, you really, really, really want to run at him level one. Make sure you bring a sentry in case he takes Sandstorm and just, like, book it at this guy. Like, it is crucial to just book it at this guy. Otherwise, he's going to have, you know, just get off too many spells, be too annoying. So burn his mana early, kill him early, and you're going to do well. And the same thing applies for Juggernaut. Any hero that doesn't just die to Sand King as well when you're playing like 1v1, let's say your support wants to gank. Any hero that doesn't just insta-die to Sand King, I think is nice, like kind of like Animage, right? Because Sand King's really good at just bullying safe laners. The amount of magic damage he outputs is just absurd now, considering you just can't cancel it. So like the previous heroes that at least had stuns to deal with it can't now or silences. So yeah, I, th I, I mean, Jug's good for that reason. Also, Jug is good because you really deal well with his harass. Not only obviously do you have spin, but healing ore is incredibly good. So take it at level two or level four at least. God, if I see another Juggernaut, guys, if you ever see a Juggernaut in your games, you have permission from me to flame him and run down mid. Just run down mid if he does not have healing ward at level four. Just do it. Make him learn his lesson. Just like spam healing ward level four in all chat as you run down mid don't actually do that but you know what i mean and then finally we have bloodseeker this is one that's like epicenter is good against bloodseeker because bloodseeker is a high armor hero and he resists it obviously but at the same time i think rupture is incredibly good against sand king sand king relies on you know kiting in and out in fights and i can't really do this against bloodseeker also i think the fact that your w puts him in a weird spot with Sandstorm, right? You put the W on top of the Sandstorm, and it makes Sand King awkward. Do you walk out of the Sandstorm, or do you tank the Blood Rite? And Sandstorm is a much longer cooldown than Blood Rite, so you can sort of just casually throw them out. Uh, See, so yeah, I'm a huge, I'm a huge fan of that interaction. And finally, for heroes that you need to learn to counter, is the meta hero Bounty Hunter. Zero is currently destroying it, Bubs. He's doing very well. And uh, yeah, first counter is Chaos Knight. So, Chaos Knight. Well, okay, let's talk about what Bounty Hunter's strengths are. So his first strength is his ability to run around and not die, okay? The worst thing that you can do against Bounty Hunter is chase him around and let him waste your time. So, why is CK good against that? Well, you have two disables. Yep. Kinda, you know, the W is sort of a disable, you get what I'm saying, right? It helps you engage. And that's like a big deal, it really is. It really is. Like, being able to track down a bounty hunter and not make your team waste a ton of time is priceless. It actually is, a, you know, there's a price, you have to pick CK, but you get the point, right? Also, you do have a way to purge track. However, it is Phantasm, which is a long cooldown, but in fights, it can be practical, you know, because when you want to initiate, you don't want to let people see you coming. So being able to purge it is good. It gives you that opportunity, which, I mean, it has its upsides. But the biggest benefit here is that, um, you know, you, you don't get harassed too hard. That's the number one, right? You have sustain in the lane. And then on top of that, you have the disables. Next up is Abaddon. You know, the main thing is Bounty Hunter in lane is harassed. So you can pick Abaddon as a five. Yep, a Abaddon as a five. You max your shield, obviously. So you deal completely well with Bounty Hunter's harass in the lane, you completely negate it, and on top of that, you purge track. That's about it. Then, and last but not least, is Clockwork. So for Clockwork, it's the same thing as, as CK, really. The fact that you can lock this hero down and actually solo kill him in many scenarios is incredibly valuable. Like, I, I really mean that. You also can scout him out with the, with the E, right? Let's say he's on the center, you can scout out the area, it's kind of nice. But um, yeah, Clockwork is just one of those heroes that kills Bounty. A lot of heroes struggle to do it. It's kind of like Nyx. A lot of heroes can struggle to kill Nyx alone, but Clockwork does it. 
You know what I mean? These these very slippery heroes that don't necessarily have blinks but are fast and slippery. Clock is very good against, as I said, like Nyx or even like Tidehunter, right? You're good against these heroes because of cogs and, and battery assault being a consistent disable, right? So yeah, Clock is very good against Bounty Hunter for those reasons. But I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any other counters you want to provide for Wraith King, Ricky Puck, SK, or Bounty Hunter, you let us know in the description. I mean, not the description. You can't type in the description. You could try. It's not probably not going to work. But yeah, comment down below. Get your Game Leap sub, by the way, guys. Is it crazy that some people still don't have Game Leap subs? In fact, it's like the large majority of the people watching this video. How disappointing is that, right? For all you people who have Game Leap subs, rave in the comments about how great it is now. But I mean, we actually do, you know, put in so much work into it. And like, I feel like the videos are just like, they're different from the YouTube videos in like a good way, you know? But all right, go check that out. Comment down below if you want to see more of these meta counter videos or heroes you want to know the counters for. Hopefully I can respond to some. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.